Hi everybody, welcome back. So we're gonna do another video where this time we talk about a subject that I think is of interest to a lot of the people who watch this channel, which is, is learning Linux worth it in 2019? So this was brought up by a couple different things. Um, so one, I was having a conversation last week with a, a gentleman named Bill Reed. Uh, Bill is the president of a company called ICM. ICM is a company I've worked with for, for a very, very long time. Uh, they handle a lot of my bookings and things like that for my classes. They sort of arrange um, the logistics stuff, right? So I just go in and I, I teach. They handle the rest. I give them a cut. They're fantastic. Um, and, uh, and Bill has been in the IT and technology space for a, a really, really long time. And the, the cool thing about ICM and sort of talking to him is they have a really interesting perspective uh, on things because uh, a they provide a lot of the Cisco instructors for a large number of the the training companies out there, um, and they also provide instructors for other areas of technology. They also do consulting, so there's a, there's a bunch of things that they sort of have their um, kind of fingers in in terms of like different pots. So they have a pretty good perspective on the the industry. Uh, so I was talking to Bill last week about the course that I, I developed and the potential for um, selling it in terms of, you know, approaching different training partners and things like that. And they can handle a lot of that for me. Um, I'm not great at the sales thing. So uh, I'm just, I'm just in it to <laughs> great content, teach people stuff and hopefully make life better. Um, anytime I sort of get to the, the, the kind of salesy bit, um, the social awkwardness, uh, that I have that probably doesn't come across in this venue, um, but definitely does with things like sales probably <laughs> comes out. So it's better left to uh, partners and things that I can work with. The percentage that they get is, is well worth uh, the stuff that they, they do for me. Anyway, I was talking to, to talking to Bill and we were uh, chatting about the kind of the place that Linux works or I don't know how to phrase this. Um, so where the industry is in relation to learning Linux as a skill um, and sort of the, the argument for um, this particular class that I'm, I'm putting together uh, or I've already put together, but you know, that we'll be sort of talking to, to partners about. And the, uh, the, the, the main sort of crux of it was sort of from my perspective um, was that if you go back 10 to 15 years, Right, so if you go back to the the early two thousands, if you knew Linux, you were guaranteed a good job. So that was kind of all you needed, right? So if you could do Solaris, if you could do BSD, if you had Unix of any kind in your, you know, um, your resume, you were you were more or less good. And my take on things, and and this is sort of where you was kind of interesting because we we both sort of agreed on it. Um, was that if you, I think, have Linux, you can probably get some some decent traction now, even if that's the only thing that you have on your resume. It's definitely a good place to sort of get in on stuff. But if you could take Linux and you can combine it with any one other major skill, right? So that's networking, that's programming, that's security, um, that's architecture, uh, that's cloud services, any of these things. If you go ahead and take Linux and those things, you have a very nice career. Um, so yeah, that's what we're gonna be looking at in this uh, in this video, is sort of chatting about, is Linux worth it in 2019? And the, the first thing is, is that I did a little bit of research uh, on this for the, the course I was putting together. So one of the things I'm really big on in the classes that I teach, um, and the, the ones that I sort of put together, is stating the case for what you're learning. Um, so a lot of times people get sent to training, especially in sort of IT, uh, they get sent to training by their employer and it may or may not be something that they're interested in. And I remember, you know, distinctly being in, in high school, um, you know, more so than the sort of later kind of learning, um, but being in high school, which is a similar kind of position where you, you're, you're basically made to go, right? <laughs> you don't have very much of a choice in the matter. I guess you could drop out, but that's probably not something that most people are, are really thinking about doing. Uh, but just being really annoyed by a lot of my classes where they never presented the why. There was just like the how, 
it was the what, so you memorize things or you learned what something was, but they never really sort of spent the time talking about the why. I remember this especially with algebra um, and just being really, really, really annoyed later in life uh, when I learned that algebra was more or less written so you could go ahead and do geometry. Right? So they were very, they're very, very sort of tied together. And that was never expressed. And as somebody who can think about things um, in sort of visual senses, that, that's a very useful thing for me uh, to sort of be able to imagine a triangle, right? And sort of all of a sudden, once I understand the, 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 the why of doing something, it, it's much easier for it to click to me. So in all my classes, I try to present the why, right? So if you're going to come to a class and you're going to learn Linux, I want to go back and sort of look at, you know, is this something that, that's useful? Why should you care about this? Um, and part of that is, is, you know, sort of talking about the open source philosophies and, you know, the background and sort of the, the philosophy of how the operating system is constructed versus, you know, Windows where, you know, Unix and Linux is small and modular. Everything sort of fits together and it's more about stream processing, getting into all that kind of stuff. But before I even get into that at all, you want to hit with the big stuff. Right? <laughs> and for most people, the big stuff is money, right? So if you're in an IT class and you're, you're sort of, you know, being told to go take this by your employer, if you tell them that this is something that could substantially increase their income or be a very good skill that, you know, bolsters their resume uh, and would make it much less likely that they get laid off in the future, things like that all of a sudden there's, there's a lot of really big tangible benefits for it. So the one of the first things, and I just sort of redid this search over here, uh, but this is from salary.com. Um, this is uh, May 19th, uh, 2019. So, you know, um, just for reference, when you guys are going back and watching this video, I don't know when you really come across this, um, but in Los Angeles, which is, admittedly uh, a higher salary market than a lot of the country. I know when I was living in Seattle, um, they, uh, or Microsoft gave a 15% um, bump to people living in California. And I think a lot of that was more for Silicon Valley, but we're still higher than, you know, the Midwest, right? Um, or even certain parts of the, the East Coast. All right, so, um, so in Los Angeles, the median salary right? So the, the median or the mean, I'm not sure how this is, is, is calculated, um, is $104,000, right? In 2019. And that's pretty good. Um, now go back 15 years ago. And if you were somebody who was mid-career, um, Unix admin in the late nineties, very early two thousands, you were, rarefied, right? Uh, there were not a ton of people that, that sort of fit that category. So, you know, you would probably be making a bit more. Um, granted, that was also sort of around the, the dot com thing and stuff like that. But um, the idea is that this is still a fairly reasonable salary. And if we go ahead and look at, you know, the sort of introductory kind of prices for the, not prices, but salaries for this, um, this is sort of the lower end, which is, uh, I would think, representative of the early part of your career, right? So that's starting off at $83,000, right? Um, and then we go ahead and get 75,000 or, you know, 75% is making about 120% uh, or 120,000, <laughs> 120, uh, not 120%. That doesn't make any sense. So that's a fairly decent range, right? Now, if you go look at somebody who's um, you know, on the DevOps side or, um, you know, cloud uh, architect, things like that, this is going to go up to, you know, in the 180s, right? If I can, yeah, this pen is being annoying. Make this a more reasonable size, change the color. So this is more like 180, right? Uh, 180 plus, right? So just depending on kind of where you are, right? So, that's, I think, the really interesting thing with this is that if you go ahead and take this as sort of your base uh, and then you add, you know, strong networking, right? Or strong scripting, right? Strong DevOps principles, right? 
right? things like Ansible and autumn, you know, pipelines and all that kind of stuff. Uh, if you go ahead and add any of that to your your sort of base Linux administration stuff, um, uh, Windows as well, right? So if you're somebody that can comfortably live in both Windows environments as well as Linux environments, those are very rare, you know, not rare, rare skills, but they're, they're you know, you are a commodity. You are something that the companies are actively looking for. Um, one of the things that, that Bill and I were talking about is one of the big pushes that they're doing right now in terms of the consulting side of their business is AD integration. So, you know, they're looking for people, they're actively looking for people uh, who have a little bit of AD experience, um, functional Linux experience, so you don't have to be a senior kind of person. Um, and, you know, um, I like LDAP experience. Right? And one of the things we talked about is, is I was potentially looking at, at, you know, building a course for them. And I don't want to say exactly what the salaries were uh, because, you know, I'm not sure you know, <laughs> if they're just telling people that. Um, but it was, you know, the, the numbers that we discussed were somewhere in this range, right? Let's, let's say that, right? So somewhere in that range. Um, and uh, maybe not the far end of that range, but somewhere, you know, in, the, in between 100 and 180, right? So somewhere in there. So that's not, that's not bad. Also, it was three weeks a month, right? So, you know, it was a consulting gig. So you'd go off on site for a while, then you'd, you know, take a week off and, and go back on, on site, things like that. So there were some things to it, but that's pretty interesting. So if you can make, let's say $100,000, we're just sort of making a nice round number, $100,000 uh, as a Linux administrator, that's great. But if there's only three jobs available, <laughs> as a Linux administrator, then, you know, who cares? Those jobs are going to be taken, right? So the other thing that's worth looking at, and I just went to dice.com. I think that basically all the job sites kind of aggregate now. So feel free to do your own searches in Woodland, or not Woodland. I'm just looking at the, you know, <laughs> thing out there and it's filtering into my brain. Feel free to do your own searches on indeed.com or, you know, Monster or Craigslist, hell, whatever sites you like to go ahead and use. So I just went to... Uh, dice.com because they make it really easy. Um, so uh, look for full-time only just to kind of keep it straightforward. So this is not contract positions or part-time or third party, uh, which is basically like a middleman kind of contracting you out. So various level of skills, right? So we get senior Linux administrator, Linux admin, full-time Linux admin, Linux admin, I guess somebody spelled it wrong, Linux systems administrator and so forth and so on. Um, so there is you know, a, a lot of these, and, and also it's sort of, you know, the, the, the salaries are pretty competitive. They look a little bit higher maybe than the, um, the, the ones that were sort of projected by dice.com. And, you know, there's a, there's a lot of these, right? So we see some Windows admins kind of jobs kicked in. I also see the predictor over here, which is 66,000 to 89,000. So, you know, I'm not sure how that, how that works out. Um, you know, depending on, you know, what we, what we saw with a couple of the, the some of the postings have like an ex, an estimated salary sort of listed. So, uh, the one that I saw there was 125, I think. Um, so I'm not sure how these, these work, but the, the idea is, um, if we go back up here, you'll see, um, that there's 379 positions, uh, currently open, right? Now you can sort of look at that and decide whether you think that that's a, a lot or that's that's a little, um, you know. And this is specifically for Linux administrator uh, is what I was looking for. Um, so we could also probably search for systems administrator, which you know might be another keyword, um, or Linux sysadmin, uh, systems engineer. So there's a lot of these kind of things. Um, but the idea is there's a fairly decent number of these jobs kicking around, right? Also, this is exactly within Los Angeles as opposed to necessarily the metro area, although it does give a 30 mile sort of buffer. So that's not too bad. Uh, if we go ahead and look and maybe try indeed.com and see what they have, um, just to, to kind of see the relevance, uh, we'll look for Linux administrator and we'll look in Los Angeles. So 
Um, and this one, 274 jobs. Um, so yeah, um, just sort of worth kind of looking at. Um, you can sort of factor that in, do the searches in your area. If you're sort of considering this kind of stuff, I think one of the best things you can do before you jump into anything is start looking at the what the potential end result is. Right? So go in and sort of check that out. So yeah, decent, decent number of jobs, not a ton, ton, a ton of jobs. I've looked, you know, a couple months ago, I think the screenshot that I took for my, my previous class uh, was like 1000 something, right? So, you know, it may just be that we're in like a lull, um, kind of whatever it is, right? And you can also sort of depend on what, what kind of area you are. So if I do look at like Chicago, right, let's say. So there we get 200 jobs uh, that are available for a Linux administrator. Uh, if we go ahead and sort of just go Linux, right, without administrator on it, we can see that this bumps up significantly to uh, 1,000, you know, uh, 400 something. But those are going to include additional positions that, you know, may not just be exclusively a Linux administrator. It might just be that you need Linux skills to go do that as well. So my takeaway is that it's, I think it's still a, a, a very viable skill to go ahead and learn. And um, one that you, you certainly might want to go ahead and consider uh, taking on. Uh, and I'm not just saying that because I, I recently put a, a course together. You can go take the take uh, Linux courses from a, a wide variety of, of providers. Um, so um, if you are going to go ahead and take, um, you know, take on learning Linux, uh, one of the things I think that you should you should do as well is is make sure that you have a very solid foundation in networking. Um, so that doesn't necessarily mean you need to go ahead and take an exam for that or get certified or things like that, uh, but really have a strong understanding of how IP works, um, how DNS work, of how routing works, um, all that kind of basic stuff. Um, if you go ahead and look at the Linux documentation project, which is tldp.org, the Linux documentation project, um, they have a, a great networking guide, which is phenomenal. Um, that is probably about as good as any other book that you could you could take um, or, or kind of read or, or learn from. So that's that's a really good supplement to to learning Linux because you know basically all the stuff that you're going to be doing with Linux, unless you're doing embedded stuff, is going to be you know network, right? So that's that's the primary use case for it. Um, the other thing that's worth sort of looking at is. If you're not specifically trying to be a Linux administrator, um, I still think that there's a huge virtue in learning Linux. The uh, the, the the class that I put together is a uh, a four day uh, class that prepares you for an LPI certification, which is the Linux Essentials certification. Um, so it's mainly kind of focused on on making people power users as opposed to uh, specifically sysadmins. And the the approach that I take um, and sort of the kind of the name that I'm, I'm thinking of, of sort of going with for the, the title of the course um, is uh, zero to, to scripting in four days, right? So my emphasis is on scripting. Um, but the other piece of it that's worth looking at is, is being comfortable in a Linux environment sets you up to do a lot of other stuff. Even if you only use this on your desktop, um, you don't have to go any further than look at some of the big YouTube channels um, like... Um, 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 I'm completely blanking on his name, uh, but Luke, um, I say Luke Smith, but I think that's wrong. Uh, but you can look at his channel. You can look at, um, you know, Brian Lunduke. Um, you can look at, um, uh, DistroTube. Um, these are all people that use Linux, but don't necessarily work as Linux administrators. They're doing other things with it. And the reason why that's very useful is because Linux is a great environment to do a lot of different stuff. There's all sorts of sort of specific custom tools you can go use. Um, I used the hell out of Pandoc uh, when I was putting my, my course together. It made my life so much easier. Um, you know, in terms of software development environments, it's phenomenal to be able to go develop in an environment where it's going to be very similar to where this is going to live in production. Now you can go use tools like Docker and things like that to do that in other environments, but everything is just sort of native uh, and super easily available in, um, in a Linux environment. So, you know, things like Git integration for, you know, pipelines, um, all that kind of stuff. It just, it's just so easy to do in Linux where it's not necessarily hard to go do it 
in uh, Windows or, or even Mac. Uh, probably easier with Mac, but with Linux and Unix in general, it's just sort of, it's already there. <laughs> you know, so they just, it just sort of handed to you with it. And by learning how to do scripting and automation kind of stuff, um, you know, even if you don't use that to automate sysadmin tasks, just to automate your kind of daily stuff. Like one thing that we were talking about in the class that I did for the Air Force a couple of weeks ago um, was uh, daily check-in stuff, right? So if you're going to go ahead and send a, um, you know, a daily status update uh, to your, you know, manager or in their case, senior officer, uh, whatever it is, you know, one thing you could go ahead and do is you could just go ahead and have a text file um, that you just go, you know, as you do things, you just, you know, edit the text file. And then at the end of the day, you just go ahead and run a script that, you know, takes that text file, formats it, puts it into an email message, uh, sets the subject up in a specific format that has the date in it, for example, uh, and sends it off to your, um, you know, uh, to your um, manager or employer, whatever it is. Uh, and then maybe like archives that that document. So at the end of the year, you can go ahead and use that as a, as a way to go ahead and, you know, sort of recap all the stuff you did for your annual review. Things like that are just so useful. <laughs> it's, it's fantastic. Um, you know, one of the things that I was, I was talking about doing is when you're learning Linux, there's all these tiny little commands that a lot of people don't realize that are there. Um, one really neat one is shuff. It shuffles up some information like you're, you're, you're shuffling a card deck, right? Um, so you can go ahead and do like an LS on a directory, pipe that into shuff, and it will grab you, um, you know, one or more random entries. And then you can just go read the man page on it. So it's a great way to sort of learn things, right? You know, just kind of go through stuff at random. Um, you can almost kind of like make your, make flashcards out of the man pages on a Linux system, uh, which is which is kind of neat. So the takeaway is, is in my opinion, I think that Linux is a very viable and useful skill in 2019. Um, I think you should also judge that for yourself, right? So look at your particular market, look at what people are, are, are looking for, uh, look at where your interests lie, uh, and how you can go ahead and combine that with other skills uh, to go ahead and create a really strong resume. And I think that's um, that's really where you get to the sort of the, you know, the really nice salaries, right? So, um, you know, where, where you're doing pretty good, right? So, yeah, thank you for taking the time to, to watch the video. Um, I've uh, mentioned a couple things today. I just want to do a little bit of housekeeping stuff. Uh, firstly, I think I'm going to go to a one video per week schedule as opposed to trying to do two videos a week. Uh, the last few weeks, it's just been really tough with traveling and uh, teaching. And, you know, all my classes are boot camp style. I, I lecture all day. Um, so going through all that, it's just, it's just tough to kind of keep up with the, uh, with the two videos uh, a week kind of thing. And I think doing one a week is much, much more viable. So I'm going to, I'm going to move to that format. I'm going to go ahead and try to do my videos uh, for Sundays. Uh, and put them out there. And then occasionally I'll do a Wednesday video um, if I have, uh, you know, some extra cycles and time and things like that. So I think I'm going to switch over to that format. Um, the other thing is uh, I am waiting to get some dates kind of figured out. So I need to talk to some people about what my availability looks like. Um, this next upcoming month is a little bit weird uh, for my schedule. I would have loved to do this sort of... Um, Thank you classes, I, I'm kind of calling it, uh, next week. But it just, you know, uh, I've, I've been teaching, you know, the week before last, last week, and I'm going to be teaching a uh, half week this week. So that, that's just a lot to, to kind of do. And I didn't get in this business to, to, to work every week. Uh, you know, I, I intentionally have a little bit of a lower salary than I could be making uh, going back into the, the sort of the full-time sector and, and doing that. Uh, in a more sort of DevOps site reliability engineering kind of kind of position. Uh, and the big reason why I do that is because it gives me time off. I can go down to the boat. I can decompress. I can all that kind of stuff. So I'm going to try to get a, a thank you class uh, in there. Um, I think the price that I'm going to do, um, and I'm, it's, 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 this is, so just in case anybody's watching this in the future, this is absolutely not the normal price for this class. Um, this is going to be me probably kind of taking a loss on it. Um, so what I think I'm going to go do is I'm going to say, if you would like to take this four day class, um, it's going to be $400, right? Um, 
I'll do 350. Well, I, mean, I, I don't want to charge a lot because I know a lot of the people who watch this channel are, are new to this stuff in their, their career and, um, you know, may not be getting sort of the, the, you know, companies pay for it and things like that. Um, and I also want to reward the people who have been sticking with me on this channel for, you know, the, the six months or so, less than, less than six months, four or five months, whatever it is, since I started it, just because people have been so supportive. Um, that is substantially lower than what we normally sell this for. Um, yeah, I, mean, I, I think before I said it was going to be like 90% off. It's not quite 90%, but it's, it's, it's a lot off. Um, when we did this class a couple of weeks ago, you, you know, if for, I don't want to give it away exactly, but it's, um, you know, it was, it, we, we, we did a custom class for about $20,000. Um, so it's really cheap. Um, I, I, I won't be able to do it if we get too few students. Um, but watch this space, um, post a comment in the, 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 the sort of section below, um, if you're, you're interested, uh, or send me a message, uh, with your contact info and I can keep you up to date on when that's actually going to go run. This is going to be a one-time deal, right? This is not going to be something I'm going to do again, uh, because it's probably going to work out to me making, you know, 10, 20 bucks an hour for that week. Um, and honestly, that's not worth the effort for me. So this is, this is purely a thank you for watching the channel. Um, and it's for you OGs, uh, who've been around since the beginning. Um, you know, <laughs> cause we're, we're less than 400 subscribers now. Um, so in the future, these prices will not be available, uh, for people. And just to clarify, this is going to be a instructor led class online. So <clears throat> I'll be available. You can ask me questions. I will help you with the labs. If you have things that you're stuck on or you want advice for your career or things like that, you will have me for those, you know, th those full, uh, four days. And, um, you know, so it's, it, it'll be, you know, it'll be, it'll be worth your time. Right. When you think about the amount of time and energy I put into putting the course together, you know, it's two months worth of work or so, um, you know, just the, the amount that I could build people doing consulting and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, when you, when you look at this, don't compare it to you, to me or one of those kind of things, because, um, you know, you're not getting the same kind of level of attention and sort of customization and things like that. If we're going through a module and people get stuck on things, we can throw the slides out the window and we'll teach it a different way or I'll demo things a different way, stuff like that. So, so the idea is at the end of it, you walk away knowing this stuff. Um, also, I won't include any vouchers, right? So if you would like to take the LPI uh, Linux Essentials exam, you can sign up for that as well. Uh, I'll talk about how to approach taking that exam, give you guys some, you know, some, some, some tips on how to go ahead and make sure that you pass it. Um, I'm not going to give you the answers or anything like that, but it'll, you know, if you follow the instructions, you'll, you'll pass. And um, of course you get the material and stuff like that as well. So, um, so yeah, so I'll, I'll figure out exactly what the dates for that are but I don't have those dates yet. Um, but, um, but yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I know this is sort of me rambling on for, for a while now, um, but I will get you those dates soon. Um, if I do make a Wednesday video, it'll probably be a Wednesday video just to kind of talk about when that's uh, going to be. Uh, but thank you guys so much for, for taking the time to watch this. Subscribe if you have not already. Click the like button if you've enjoyed this video, and I will see you next time uh, on Sunday with uh, another video. Have a great one. Bye-bye.